All right, we left off from chapter three of Night of the Spades at Toast. We've learned a lot of things about Ben, how he's new to Massachusetts from Arizona. He's really struggling to make friends and to, he doesn't like um, the weather. He just really doesn't like Massachusetts and he wants to go back to Arizona. Um, he got into an argument with his mom and his sister. So he went running out of the house and into his woods. He kept hearing this really cool sound and it ended up being a frog. So he took that frog back to his home and he put it in his garage in a bucket. And um, that was the last thing that, oh, and then he talked to his friend Toby back in Arizona, cheering him up a little bit. Um, and that is where we left off. So let's read chapter four. The next day after school, Ben checks on the frog in the bucket. It's still just sitting there and it doesn't seem very happy. It doesn't seem very much of anything. He feels bad. He knows he should let it go, but he doesn't want to yet want to yet. He takes a plastic grocery bag and garden trowel into the backyard, where he digs up some dirt, grass, and wet leaves. Next, he wanders out under the big trees and finds some worms under an old log. He plops them into the bag. Then he takes his back his bag back to the garage and puts the things he's gathered into the bucket with the frog. It's not much of a home, he thinks, but it'll have to do for now. The next morning, a few minutes before time to leave for the bus stop, Ben goes out into the garage to check on the frog. It doesn't seem to have moved since the night before. He feels bad leaving it there all day, so he picks it up and slips it into his jacket again. It'll be fun having a secret frog in his pocket. By the time he gets to school, he wonders what he was thinking. Was he nuts? What do you do with a frog in school? Ben doesn't want to be there. Why would a frog want to be there either? He's afraid to leave the jacket hanging on the peg in the coat room, so he keeps it on. Mrs. Coucher asks him to take it off, but Ben tells her he's cold. All through the next morning, he keeps checking. All through the morning, he keeps checking his pocket. The frog just sits there, barely moving. Once, when Ben keeps, puts his hand in his pocket, the frog squirms a little like he's trying to get away. It's okay, buddy, he whispers. At least it's warm in there. Today, Mrs. Coocher leads the kids down to science class. Mrs. Tibbetts isn't in the classroom again, but there's a note on the door saying she's working with the first graders on the other side of the school. Mrs. Coocher looks at the note and says, all right, class, you're all fifth graders and know how to behave yourself. Have a seat until Mrs. Tibbetts is back. Everyone takes their seats. Mrs. Coocher watches them for a moment, then turns and walks down the hall. The class is alone again. Everyone sits at their desk quietly for about 30 seconds. Then they all start talking. Ben checks his pocket again. Ryan notices. What are you doing? It's too good a secret to keep. Ben wants to share it with someone, even if it's only Ryan. He pulls out the frog. As soon as he does, he realizes it's a mistake. Nothing stays a secret with Ryan for long. The kid leaps from his desk and hops over to Ben's on one foot. Cool, a frog, where'd you get it? Shh, Ben tries to calm Ryan down. I found it in my house. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know, just keep it, I guess. Why don't you scare somebody with it, Ryan asks, or put it down someone's back. Here, let me hold it. Ryan reaches for it, just like he did the mouse. I've gotta put it back, Ben says, but Ryan already has his fingers on the frog. Ryan, no! Ryan's not listening. He can't listen. It's exactly what, ha what happened the other day. What is wrong with this kid? Other kids gather around to see what's going on. Ben pulls the frog away from Ryan, but it wiggles out of his hands. It falls to the floor and sits there. Frankie pounces. Got it, he yells. He holds it up and starts to run around the room with it. He shoves it in Janice Decker's face. Here, kiss it. Give the Tony a little kiss. Stop it, she squeals. Come on, Frankie, give it back, Ben pleads. It's not yours and it doesn't like that. Poor Tony doesn't like kissing girls. Frankie turns so Ben can't reach the frog and laughs hysterically. What's going on now? Mrs. Tibbetts' voice rings out. Everybody stops what they're doing and looks at her standing in the doorway. In your seat, right this minute. Kids scramble to their desk. Ben doesn't move. He wants the frog back but is afraid to go after it. It's dead quiet. Mrs. Tibbetts walks into the room and slams a stack of books down on her desk. I expect you to act like ladies and gentlemen when I'm out of the room, she says. I have to walk all the way across the school to get back to you. Surely you can wait quietly for a minute. Then she notices Ben standing there. He isn't sure what to do. Frankie's in his seat, trying to look innocent. Ben, Mrs. Tibbetts says, that means you too. I know, but Ben starts, but what? In your seat right now. There's nothing for Ben to do but head to his seat. 
He glances at Frankie, who's still holding on to the frog. Frankie isn't laughing now. In fact, his mouth is twisted into a scowl and his face is turned red. Everyone knows that Frankie has the frog. Everyone but the teacher. Mrs. Timmons turns to the whiteboard and starts to write on it. The room is quiet for all of 10 seconds. Oh, gross, Frankie yells, leaping from his chair. It pooped on me. He drops the frog to the floor and holds his hands out like they've been toxic waste on them. Everyone shrieks and laughs. He pooped, he pooped, Ryan squeals. He's up and out of the seat, dancing around. Mrs. Tibbetts whirls around and glares at the glass like they've all lost their minds. What in heaven's name? It pooped on my hands, Frankie moans. Then she sees the frog. It's just sitting there like it belongs in science class. She walks over and looks down at it. The classroom is dead quiet now. Someone's gonna die, Ben thinks, and it'll probably be me. Frankie, Mrs. Tibbetts says, did you bring this into class? She hasn't moved from where she's standing. No, Frankie said, his face is still red. He did, he says, pointing at Ben. He brought it into class and let it go, and I caught it so it could, wouldn't get hurt. Ben feels sick to his stomach. He knows he's in hot water, but he's more worried about the frog. He never should have brought it into school. He's about to go grab the creature and is ready to take punishment, whatever punishment he gets. But Mrs. Divitz bends over and grasps the frog at its hips. The frog kicks its legs and every single kid looks at Mrs. Tibbetts in wonder. She cups it in her hand and strokes it under its chin. Ew, someone says. Mrs. Tibbetts looks around at the class and, mis and a mischievous smile spreads across her face. She kisses the frog. Ew, gross! Everyone is yelling now, horrified and delighted. When the class finally calms down, Mrs. Tibbetts asks, who knows what this is? A toad, says Frankie. Duh. Mrs. Tibbetts doesn't say anything. No, it's not, Ben says. Mrs. Tibbetts looks at him quickly. What is it, Ben? It's a frog, he says. Frog, toad, what's the difference? Frankie mur mutters. It pooped on my hands. Mrs. Tibbetts ignores him. She walks towards Ben's desk. And how do you know it's a frog and not a toad? Well, by its color and in its skin, Ben says. What about its skin? Well, it's smooth and toads have bumpy skin. And its legs are longer than toads, I think. And toads have these bumps behind their ears that make the, this poison stuff. P parotid gl glands, Mrs. Tibbetts says. I guess, Ben says. Mrs. Tibbetts nods. You're right, it's a frog. Toads are kind of frog, but they have certain characteristics that make them special, like you said. So all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Do you know what kind of frog this is? Ben shakes his head. One that poops, Ryan says. Mrs. Tibbetts doesn't bat an eye. All frogs poop. All living things poop. Pooping is part of life. The kids all laugh. Mrs. Tibbetts waits until the giggling dies down and says, this is a wood frog and a very confused one too. She's just come out hoping to find a place to lay eggs and instead she's in a science class. Mrs. Tibbetts holds the frog up to her face again and looks closely at it. Is she gonna kiss it again? They have a funny call, she goes on. They sound like ducks quacking. You mean it doesn't chirp or peep? Ben asks. He's thinking about the sounds behind his house now. He's forgotten about being in trouble. No, she says. Those are spring peepers. She looks at Ben with a wry look on her face. Like she can't decide if she should smile or frown. In that moment, Ben feels like she's looking right inside him. This frog is not very happy here, she says. Then she turns to Ryan. Ryan, please run down to the cafeteria and ask for a jar to keep it in until Ben puts it back where it belongs. What do I do about the poop on my hands? Frankie asks. Mrs. Tibbetts gives him a dirty look, but Frankie doesn't seem to mind. Ben figures that Frankie's happy to have poop on his hands. Frankie's happy to have poop on his hands. If only so, he can keep saying the word poop. Ryan, go and please be quick about it. Frankie, you may wash your hands. Ryan hops out of his seat and bounces out the door headed toward the cafeteria. Frankie leaves behind him. Ben sits at his seat, more confused than ever. He's waiting for Mrs. Tibbetts to yell at him, but she just goes back to the front of the class. He's relieved for sure, but also baffled. After what Mrs. Tibbetts said, he's worried that he might have done something to hurt the frog. Mrs. Tibbetts is standing in front of the classroom, trying to decide where to put the frog, when Mr. Nickleby, the principal, pushes Ryan through the door. Excuse me, Mrs. Tibbetts, is this one of your students? 
Brinsley asked stiffly. Everything about Mr. Nickleby is official, even his voice. He's always dressed very neatly in a suit and tie, like a businessman. Ben's only talked to him once, the day he enrolled in school last month. But he knows it's Mr. Nickleby's first year as principal, and he looks young, tons younger than Mrs. Tibbetts. Still, he's Mrs. Tibbetts' boss, which seems completely weird to Ben. Everybody in the room but the principal knows that Mrs. Tibbetts is still holding the frog. The whole class is holding its breath. Mrs. Tibbetts sighs. Yes, Mr. Nickleby, this is one of my students. This young man was running down the hall. When I told him there was no reason to run, he explained that you had sent him on an emergency errand to the cafeteria. The class looks at Mrs. Tibbetts. She's holding the frog right out in plain sight. I did send him on an important errand, and I asked him to hurry. We need something for this. And she thrust the frog out toward him, like it's the most natural thing in the world to present to a principal. Mr. Nickleby steps back. A toad, he says in his official princess voice. A frog, four or five students say all together, which doesn't help matters. Mr. Nickleby looks at the class like they're from Mars, and Mrs. Tibbetts tries not to smile. Yes, Mr. Nickleby, she says, my frog. It needs a home for the rest of the day before it goes back where it belongs. Are you studying amphibians? Mr. Nickleby asked. Not exactly. We're studying the water cycle, according to the curriculum. But it's early spring and frogs are around, and I really like them. So we're talking about frogs today. Mr. Nickleby frowns. Mrs. Tibbetts and the principal stand five feet apart, staring at each other. Finally, Mr. Nickleby shakes his head and turns to Ryan. Young man, absolutely no running in the halls, even when Mrs. Tibbetts sends you on an errand. But she told me to hurry, Ryan begins. No running, period. Mr. Nickleby gives Mrs. Tibbetts one more hard look and heads out the door. The class is silent, watching Mrs. Tibbetts. She shakes her head. Ben has a lump in his throat. Mrs. Tibbetts could have told Mr. Nickleby that he stumped the frog into the class, but she didn't. Ryan, she says, do you think you could please walk to the cafeteria and ask for a jar without getting any of us in any more trouble? Sure, yeah, he says and bounds out the door. No running, Mrs. Tibbetts yells after him as she heads back to her desk. She stops for a moment like she's thinking. Then she opens the top drawer, puts the frog in, and shuts it. On with the water cycle, she says, turning towards the board. Everyone smiles. It's great to be in science class with a frog in the drawer. Ben's not sure exactly what just happened between Mrs. Tibbetts and Mr. Nickleby, but it doesn't seem like they like each other very much. Did he get Mr. Mrs. Tibbetts in trouble? His knee jiggles. His knee jiggles up and down as he thinks about it, and he presses his hand against his stomach, which is turning over and over, like it has a life of its own. He feels horrible and excited at the same time. There's something very unusual about Mrs. Tibbetts, something he really likes. At the end of the day, while everybody's getting ready to go home, Ben asks Mrs. Kutcher for permission to go back to the science room. He hopes Mrs. Tibbetts is there. He wants the frog back. Mrs. Tibbetts is sitting at her desk. The frog is in a glass jar in front of her. Something feels sort of sad about Mrs. Tibbetts, all alone in the room with the frog. Ben takes a deep breath, then lets it out all at once. <sighs> Mrs. Tibbetts? She looks up. Yes, Ben, do you have a question about the homework? It's about the frog. He waits a moment for her to say something, but she doesn't. He goes on. I'm sorry I brought it in, and I shouldn't have had it in, out in class. Ryan wanted to see it, and it got away. Mrs. Tibbetts looks at him, then at the frog in the jar. Where did you find it? She asks. Out behind my house? In your backyard? Not exactly. Ben hesitates, then the words pour out in a rush. First I heard this chirping noise, and when I followed it, I came to this place where it's really wet. There were a lot of puddles and a bunch of trees standing in the water, and then I heard the chirps again. I guessed it was frogs, or maybe toads. Those were frogs, spring peepers. How do you know? Ben asks. I can't be sure without hearing them myself, but from the way you described the place and the sound, I say it had to be peepers. I often got to listen to them in the spring. I love being outdoors. Me too. My husband taught science too, biology. He was the one who really loved frogs. Me too. Or, I like frogs, Ben says, and lizards. At home in Tucson, I had a terrarium with a gecko in it. Tucson? Is that where you moved from? Ben nods. There was a wash near my house where the river ran when it rained, and I found all sorts of great stuff there. Sometimes I went with my friend, Toby. I bet you missed it. Yeah, I do. It's, it's different here. Ben has always said more than he'd imagined he would. Mrs. Tibbetts is the first person in Massachusetts who seems to have noticed anything about him. He likes Mrs. Kutcher all right, but she's never asked him about where he lived or what he likes. 
Mrs. Tibbetts picks up the jar and holds it out. Well, then I imagine that this frog feels the same way you do about missing her home. Why don't you take her and put her back where she belongs? Ben smiles. Okay, I will. Sorry. That's all right, but no more frogs in school. Okay, Ben says. Unless I ask for them, of course. Mrs. Tibbetts gives him a little wink. Ben takes the jar. He's almost out the classroom door when Mrs. Tibbetts calls out, Oh, Ben! He stops and turns back. Mrs. Tibbetts hesitates for a moment and then says, The young man who used to help me around the yard has taken a full-time job at the landscape center. I have a big place, and I can't take care of it all by myself. Would you like to help me some Saturday? I have some nice woods and a pond on my land. When we get through working, maybe we could take a walk and see what kind of critters we find there. The word critters jumps out at Ben like an old friend. It's the word Mr. Tompkins always used. But Ben has never been a, to a teacher's house before. The whole thing seems a little strange. Sure, he says. Fine, some Saturday then, whenever it stops raining. Okay, Ben says and hurries down the hall carrying the glass jar with the toad inside. He doesn't want to miss the bus. He's got a frog to deliver. That was chapter four. We are going to go ahead and read.